beautiful morning. It was a mixture of uh, clouds and sun. And just before we went into the chapel, it started to pour rain on us. We got drenched in the bright blazing sun. And I thought, wow, how appropriate. That's Mike. You know, he's a, he's a guy that was all about sunshine. And uh, there's no way that we were going to send him off without getting drenched. And there was a beautiful rainbow there as well. And I'm sure he would have been fascinated by the phenomenon of that, uh, you know, got into the physics of it. His real Mike is this guy that's right over here looking at this chambered Nautilus, this photograph. You know, he was, uh, he was so curious. You know, the world to him was just full of wonder. And he was a natural storyteller. Um, you know, I'm sure he's explaining the Nautilus right there, how it forms, and I'm sure the, the fractal mathematics that go into the spiral of its, of its shell. And he was a storyteller above all things. And the way he chose his words was very precise and very thoughtful, but the delivery was this kind of staccato, you know, stream of consciousness. And I, you know, I tell anybody, and I've been doing this a lot in the last week, that didn't know him well, to Google his TED speech, because it's an 18 minute speed rap that perfectly encapsulates the quintessential Mike, his passion for the ocean and all of its inhabitants and his childlike wonder and curiosity and his willfulness to take action, not just to dream, but to actually act on those dreams. Now Mike and I knew each other for years in, in you know this small community of underwater filmmakers, but we were together for the first time in 2005 on uh, Last Mysteries of the Titanic, and he was my underwater DP, and he did all the filming at the Titanic wreck site for that, that film, 12,500 uh, feet down in the North Atlantic. And it was a great collaboration. You know, I, I really emerged from that with a deep respect for Mike's work ethic, his skill, and his artistic eye. And, uh, you know, we could, we could name all the, all the things that he accomplished all night long, the Emmys and all the films that he's made and so on. But it should be pointed out, because this might not be widely known, that he was uh, named as a Nogi recipient this year. He actually sent me an email saying, well, somebody screwed up and they're giving me a Nogi. So uh, if you don't know, that's the equivalent of, uh, of winning an Oscar in the underwater community, except a lot harder. And uh, he was due to receive that in November. You know, I think it's long overdue. And he asked me to be his presenter, and I told him I would be very honored to do that. And Mimi asked me, you know, what, uh, not directly, but through, through uh, my, our, our mutual friend Mike McDowell, what to call this part of the, of the remembrance. And I said, the future, future projects, which is bittersweet, because it's the future that's now not to be. But I think it's good for us here to understand Mike's frame of mind toward the end of his life. It was one of infinite possibility and enthusiasm. See, I got it written down right here, and I didn't even know what, what Roger was going to say. Mike and I had big plans. Uh, Andrew White and Mike and I were going to produce a, a new series, a multi-year ship-based expedition project going around the world, a project called Ocean Challenge. <laughs> it was going to have subs and ROVs and all manner of technical diving all that stuff that he loved, and we were going to shoot it all in 3D. A you know, grand adventure to travel the world, and not only to show the wonder of the seas and share that with audiences as, ne as never before, but to also to bring back the stories from the front line of you know how our human influence was threatening the ocean survival. Because if you knew Mike, you knew that he was a warrior. He's a warrior for the ocean. It had been our shared dream for years to do this project, and we were, we were going to start right after we finished our current project, which is uh, Deep Challenge, which we were doing with National Geographic. And Andrew and I were figuring out how to shoot Deep Challenge a few months ago, and I said, you know, Mike DeGrio would be perfect for this. And when Mike heard, you know, that we were going, that we were finally going, he said, I'm in. No hesitation. Now, I could live with regret that I thought of Mike for that job and that led ultimately to him being in a helicopter with Andrew, you know, on that, that afternoon a week ago. But I'm not going to regret it because it was such a natural choice. I mean, who better 
to shoot the story of exploring the ocean's deepest depths with a new sub using the most advanced new underwater camera systems than Mike. He was utterly in his element, and he would have been insulted if we hadn't called him. So I got to work with Mike one last time, and I'll remember him while we were shooting. He was so full of just that, that passion, that, that enthusiasm for what he did. He was bursting with ideas and solutions. I mean, Roger summed it up. He was the Tasmanian devil when he would attack a problem. And it was such a pleasure to work with Mike because he knew his stuff so well. And he didn't have to worry. You could count on him to get the shot. That's a big thing in my world. He made this hard and exhausting process of filmmaking a joy. Because to him it was a joy and he shared that joy. The joy in the task with everyone around him. I think it's all, it's important for all of us to remember that in the last days of his life, Mike was completely and utterly in his element doing what he loved more than anything. So we were about to depart on this great adventure and you know, everything he'd done, all the experience gleaned from making scores of films for several decades had led to that moment. And I had just piloted the first open ocean dive of our new sub, the Deep Sea Challenger, and Mike was right there in the water with me on scuba with the 3D camera uh, there in, Jar in Jarvis Bay in, in Australia. And he was uh, swimming right outside the sub, doing the first shots of the sub at night as the, as the lights came on. And I heard later from uh, Simon Christides, uh, one, of, one of our underwater camera operators, who was actually with Mike in the water. And he said the two of them, when the lights came on on the sub, said the two of them just looked at each other and grinned in their masks. You know how on scuba two people could connect underwater and know exactly what the other one was thinking. And it was, holy shit. <laughs> this is going to be great. This is going to look great on film. So this was a triumphant day. And, uh, you know, the sub checked out and then we're back on board afterwards and, and the, 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 uh, Mike had handled the, this, this, you know, complex new cutting edge 3D camera, this Alexa beam splitter rig that Vince Pace had built. He'd handled it perfectly and the footage looked amazing and we're all crowded around the monitors back on the ship, you know, wearing our 3D glasses. And we knew for the first time that we really had a film and it was just going to be great. Two days later, we're just about to launch the sub again so that the co-designer of the sub, Ron Allen, can, can do his first dive. We just locked the hatch, and uh, a few miles away, Andrew and Mike were taking off to film the launch of the sub. And they'd been laughing and talking and, and, and sharing stories as they approached the helicopter. Uh, in the middle of the launch procedure, my deck officer, David Watherspoon, motioned to me and uh, we stopped the operation. He said he'd gotten word that there was a crash, and I said, okay, all right, all right. Don't overreact. You know, these, these uh, low-speed you know, crashes on takeoff, they'll probably just stand there right next to a broken-up helicopter looking sheepish as hell. So we stopped the launch and uh, jumped into the, to the uh, rib, and we raced for shore, and you know, we got to the crash site in about a half hour, and we were you know, stunned to learn the truth when we arrived that our friends were gone, just like that. And it seemed uh, senseless and impossible. And I was uh, so heartsick with the idea of, of going on, the expedition just seemed irrelevant. But something kind of amazing happened over the next couple days. All the members of the team, the shooting crew, the expedition team, came to me, sometimes one by one in my cabin, sometimes in groups, and they expressed one overwhelming sentiment that we could not stop. And it was unanimous that we had to go on because the expedition represented everything that Andrew and Mike stood for. And I can synthesize that down to three words, the spirit of exploration. So to continue, was to honor them, and it would be the only suitable tribute to the values that they lived by. It was hard to even think about going on or trying to fill the gap left by them in the team, but somehow I had to figure out how to do it. And uh, with the blessing of both Mimi 
and Andrew's wife, Monica, we all made a vow to continue the expedition and the film in their honor. And so last night, steaming out of Sydney Harbor, the Mermaid Sapphire, our expedition ship, left bound for New Guinea. And I'll fly and meet the team there. And uh, we'll go on to our deep trials of the sub, and then we'll go on to the Challenger Deep. So I bear here to you today, to the Degree family and to all Mike's friends and loved ones, the tidings and condolences from the entire expedition crew who can't be here because they're, they're carrying on. We're going to go on and we're going to prevail, and we're going to do so with a very heightened sense of the fragility of life and the necessity for absolute discipline when it comes to safety. No bold endeavor is risk-free, but it's critical to manage those risks absolutely relentlessly to the best of our human ability. Mike was an extremely safe diver, an extremely safe sub-pilot, and his focused and questioning approach to every dive operation will be my guide, and I imagine him as my guardian spirit.